Hey guys, it's Kelly Ann and it's another Flossy Friday. It is also World Cross Stitch Day, so that's pretty exciting that it falls on a Friday. I actually happen to be home sick today. Um, it's the middle of the day now and I woke up this morning with a massive migraine. Thank God for prescriptions. Um, and I could barely move my back or my right leg. Um, so I've done a few things because um, once my migraine started going away um, and I was able to by my head physically move, um, it does help um, the soreness in my back and legs that I've been experiencing lately. It does help if I start moving around, but um, they were incredibly sore and my migraine did not assist at all. So, um, yeah, I've done a few things because I do have to pack and get ready at some point today for the weekend. I'm going home for three days for my dad's birthday. So, um, uh, by the time I made it out of bed, I did come into the living room and I have been working on one of my stitches. So last week we spun the wheel, um, well, I did before recording and I did that again today I've actually been having a lot of fun playing with that app um, it's called tiny decisions thanks EJ um, for showing it to everybody I know there are several apps out there for the same thing and like I said before I wanted unlimited wheels and unlimited um, items on my wheels so I did pay the $1.99 for the app um, and I don't regret that um, <clears throat> there are a couple of cool things that you can do within the app that I don't know if everybody knows that you can do. Unfortunately, whenever you do a fully close down the app by like double clicking on your home button and swiping up, um, it does reset your wheels, which is kind of unfortunate. I feel like that's a missed opportunity by the Tiny Decisions um, application, whoever created that. Um, but if you go into the settings in that app, you can make it to where your options black out. So that way, if you are spinning a couple of times um, in the same time of having the application open, yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> then you won't get double, like double the same thing. Like if you don't have like a wheel with like 40 items on it, like some of mine. So um, anyways, <laughs> that's been really fun to play with and then also if you go to where you can edit your actual like options on your wheels you can put a higher percentage from um, 1 to 99 on different options so that way if there are some things that you're wanting to avoid a little bit more than others you can give them lower percentages so that way they have a smaller chance of being landed on I think that's kind of funny um, and cool if that's what you want to do but last week um, I spun the wheel and it was work on my oldest whip and work on my closest finished now in last week's video I did think that my pretty little Hawaii was my closest finish and that's actually my second closest finish my closest finish is actually my Michael Powell so all that was left on my Michael Powell was the back stitching so um, whenever I realized that that's the one that I got out but let's talk about my oldest whip first. Now, I had a little bit of an incident in two spots on this. Um, so the first one is right up here, just a little bitty dot. But I'm hoping that how I frame this, that won't matter. Um, apparently, the highlighter that I've been using hit my, um, hit the top of my, um, hoop and I had the top of my project like folded you know um, in the hoop like I had it you know like all folded and bent up and like scrunched so that way you know like all the excess um, fabric up at the top wasn't disturbing me and so it got this tiny little dot and I don't know when it happened um, I'm typically pretty careful so it must have been a very crazy fluke, um, which we all know happens. Um, it's 
nicer if it happens on a darker fabric and doesn't matter as much but I was lucky and the giant spot of ink that got on this luckily is covered up with full coverage so I don't know if you can see it but there is a little bit of green left that I haven't finished covering up but this dot goes all the way around here and some of it you can see in this lighter blue um, but like I said, it's actually, it's not, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm really lucky that the stove covers all of it. And, um, I accidentally used the wrong blue for the stove. So the main part of the stove is actually supposed to be the medium blue color, but I'm actually really okay with this. Um, there isn't a whole lot of the darker blue in this. And there's a lot of the medium blue. And so um, I'm actually kind of okay with it um, because the darker blue is supposed to be the lettering on the doors. And I kind of like it better. Um, and it also hides the bright green highlighter mark a little bit better as well. Um, okay, so this is where I'm at. So I have the border to finish. So it's gonna match this, so you know, some more straight in that little bubble. Um, and then I just have like the top of the words. I have to finish the stove, and then all that is left is the two circle um, cake pans. So I'm actually really close to finishing this now. I'm about 75% done, which is really, really nice. Um, another thing that I finished and I never really counted this as one of mine, um, but I decided to go ahead and count it as one of mine. So I guess I also completed my closest finish, but not really. Um, so whenever we went to Germany and Austria and Italy, whenever I was about 10 or 11 years old, I believe I was closer to 10, so like 1996, 1997, um, we went into a stitching shop and no, I don't remember when, where, um, I believe we were either, we might have been in Austria, but I'm pretty sure we were in Germany. Not, I again, I'm not sure where we were, but we picked up a larger needlepoint piece, which I'm going to attempt to find this weekend at my dad's house. Should be in his closet, hoping. Um, but we also had these two little kits. One of them is a church and one of them is this, is this little cottage. My mom had originally started this and did the sky, the light blue part, and that was all that she got finished. And it is needlepoint, so it's not full X's, but um, I finished this. It was really quick and easy. We get two 15 minute breaks a day at work and then I would work on it at lunch. And so I just kept it next to my computer and I worked on it. And the kit comes with the, the framing stuff, but the instructions are kind of weird. Um, like it says to put this, one of these circles on the back of it and like get it wet. I don't know, it's kind of weird instructions. So I'm gonna, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna attempt the instructions that came in the package or if I'm gonna figure out my own way to frame it, but it does come with a cute little black plastic frame, um, which really makes the needlepoint pop and stuff. And so um, I'm also gonna work on the second kit. It's um, still at work, so I'm gonna be working on that. And now for my closest to a finish, like I said, thought it was my little Hawaii, but it turns out it was really my Michael Powell. So, um, I could not put down Victoria's Sponge. I was having so much fun with it, which is just crazy to me because, um, I haven't, I don't want to say I haven't wanted to work on it, but I tried working on it a couple months ago, or I feel like it wasn't too long ago that I tried to work on it and I just got really bored and I just didn't enjoy working on it. But this last week, um, I don't know what it is, but I mean... In the last week, I've like finished this part, a little bit of this, and I've done this entire side. So I've just, I haven't wanted to put it down. Um, so that's been really fun. But so this is my Michael Powell. So far, I literally just picked this up last night. I'm gonna keep on working on it today because 
I kind of think of like as Friday as like the beginning and end to my week because I do my videos on Fridays, sometimes on Thursdays, but um, yeah, so I'm doing the outside border thicker and then I'm doing the inside um, back stitching thinner. And I think that's, I think it's making it look, I don't want to say like cooler because doing it all single stitch would still look really awesome. Go check out Michelle Bindi Stitchies from last summer. But um, I think it just, it adds like a different like dimension and the, the rings in the sun, I made bolder as well. I made two strands just because they're already kind of harder to see. So I just, I don't know, using the different thickness I feel has given it like a different um, like texture and look and I just really like it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I still have a bit to go, but like this tower right here, you can see, cause I haven't done half of it. This right here literally still like, it looks like the background, you know? But um, part of that is the wall the other side of this tower. So, I mean, a lot of this really truly like blends into each other and doesn't look like it doesn't look like it's supposed to be anything until you start putting in this back stitch, which is really awesome and really crazy, but I will tell you this pattern for the back stitch is so and I know that I have it all highlighted, but it is so hard to read some of the lines. Um, even in the color copy, it is just so hard to read some of these lines. Um, so I'm relying on not only my black and white copy that I've highlighted, but I'm going over all of the lines with, um, a black pen to, to mark where I've already outlined, um, to keep myself straight. And I'm referring to the color version copy, and I'm also referring to just a finished picture, um, not Michelle's, but like the finished picture that's, that um, was like the promotional picture for the chart, I guess is a f way to phrase it. Um, but just like an image, um, a computerized image of the finished chart. And <clears throat> to kind of like, if I can't tell where the lines are, I'm kind of guesstimating. And so that's another reason why I'm going over or like doodling the lines that I'm putting in on the actual chart. So that way, whenever it comes to do like the next section, um, I don't overdo any, I don't know. It's, that's not a fun process. The lines are incredibly hard. Even Michelle will tell you that, that um, kind of like back stitching it from the pattern is slightly a nightmare, but the look of it in the end is so incredible that it's worth it um and i will have to agree with that statement but it, it is interesting um okay so i don't have any haul or anything else to show but i did spin the wheel so i also um i am going home this weekend and it is really hard for me to cross stitch at home. One, I just don't have good lighting. And two, there isn't really like a good place like what I have set up here, like in my living room with my coffee table at my dad's house. There just isn't an area like that at his house. Um, so I typically stitch in my bedroom, my old bedroom, on the bed so I try to take stuff that doesn't have a whole lot of colors and might be easier to manage at my dad's house if I if I even get to stitch um, because usually I don't get to we typically stay pretty busy doing stuff and by the time we get home or by the time you know I finally get to go to my room because you know, my dad wants to hang out and chat and stuff like that. And he doesn't really appreciate that I can chat and whatnot with him in the room talking to me um, all the time. So um, I'm tired. And so I just don't always get to a stitch. But um, I did spin the wheel. And one of the first ones I got was a present stitch. And I... I'm so glad that this is what the wheel landed on because um, that means that I get to take or start a new present or work on a present gift. And um, so I'm going to take the present for my friend's birthday of his company's logo 
that I only have a one thread color to take as much as I hate the glow in the dark thread it will still be easy to maintain um, because I have two of the letters to finish filling in um, so even if all I get is those two letters finished being filled in and I don't get the other two outlined and filled in, I'm okay with that progress is progress. So I won't really have to pay attention to a pattern for a little while, so it'll be easier to manage. So I am really glad that present stitch is one of the ones that it landed on. Um, I did spin it two, oh, okay, I technically spun it three more times and I'll explain why I'm not counting the other one. So the next one that it landed on, because I think it's really fun to do two spins a week and kind of divide my week up so that way I get to work on two different things and don't get burned out. Although this week I was slightly sad to switch my stitch. Um, but the next one that it landed on was Oldest Whip, or no, not Oldest Whip, Closest to a Finish. So I did land on Closest to a Finish again, which means I get to work on Michael Powell a little bit longer, which really excites me because I'm hoping to be able to finish this um, this week. Uh, because I really feel like if I work on this some more today and tonight in between like packing and stuff, um, that I really could get this finished in maybe like one or two more evenings next week. Uh, which will be really fun because then I'll have another finish for the year. And then I spun it another time and it landed on Hade. And I'm ignoring that for right now because I think, um, and uh, I think there's going to be something kind of like fun happening with my Hade soon. Um, and it's going to be like a fun partnership kind of thing. So um, I want to kind of like save working on my Hade for that right now. So I kind of ignored that it landed on my Hade. And the next one that it landed on was Stitcher's Choice. So if I <coughs> if I take my friend's present home this weekend, work on that, then whenever I get back on Monday, I will work on my Michael Powell, hopefully finish that Monday or Tuesday, possibly Wednesday. And for Stitcher's Choice, I think for the rest of the week, I'm going to go back to my Victoria Sponge because I'm so close to finishing this. Um, so I really kind of want to finish this. Um, and so you never know. Maybe I'll have two finishes next week or one and really close to another one. Um, but yeah, it would be really fun to get my oldest whip out of my collection as a finish. Um, and then my last oldest whip from 2014 will be my Hogwarts crest, but it is one of my least finished whips, which is also a spot on my wheel. So, um, it'll, it'll be fun and exciting to see, um, what all transpires over the next week as far as progress goes. Um, <clears throat> I hope everybody is having a really good Friday, has a really good weekend and week up ahead of them. And I hope that you have a great um, World's Cross Stitch Day. And I will see y'all next time. Bye guys.